Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware on your RadioMaster TX16S. Before we go any further, there are two things that I want to say about upgrading firmware on any radio. The first thing is that the radio ships with a working firmware. So if you're not comfortable doing this kind of work, or if you're concerned that this type of thing might brick your radio, then just stop. Just stop and, and don't worry about it because while firmware updates can be important, a lot of times they add features and functions that are new after or subsequent to you buying the radio. So in general, the radio will work just fine the way you got it, and it'll probably do what you want it to do. The second thing I'll say is back your stuff up first. So if you have a radio full of models and configurations, back them up before you upgrade your firmware. I will show you how to do a backup in this video because it's a critical step, but definitely don't skip it because if you do, there's a very good chance that you could lose your work and that would be devastating. I, I mean, I, if I had to reset up all of my models from scratch, that would be devastating, It'd be a lot of work. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about what's required to get your firmware updated on the RadioMaster TX16S. And by the way, this process will apply for just about anything that runs OpenTX. I'm sure, I know it works on Tyrannus, and I'm pretty sure the process will be very similar for things like the Jumper T16, for example, or T18. So there are eight things that we need to do and I'm making the assumption that you don't have any of the software on your computer that you need. So we're going to start as if you have nothing. So step number one, we have to download OpenTX Companion. OpenTX Companion is the software that lets you interact between your desktop and your radio. And it's great software, really good software. And by the way, it's free. Number two, we need to install OpenTX Companion and create a profile. So in order to explain to OpenTX Companion what hardware you're using, you need, to, you need to create a profile to do that. The third thing we're going to do is back up our models. And I mentioned that in the opening segment. You have to back up your models because if you don't and you do something wrong, you're really going to be unhappy. Number four, we're going to download the firmware, and that's also a function built right into OpenTX Companion. Number five, we'll boot the radio into what's called bootloader mode, which allows us to write the firmware to the radio. Then number six, we're actually going to write the firmware to the radio. Number seven, we'll download the SD card, and I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'll show you the steps to take, but I'm not actually going to perform it because my SD card is set up and I don't want to mess it up. So I'll show you how to do it, but I'm not going to actually conduct the steps. And then the last step is to extract the X SD card to the radio. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I will put links in the description so you don't have to worry about trapping it or writing down what you see on the screen. But the easiest way to find the software that you need is to go to Google and do a search for download OpenTX Companion. And the very first link you'll get is downloads under OpenTX. So we click on that and the latest version as of this video of OpenTX is 2.3.9. That's what I'm running in my radio. So I'm going to click on that. And then down here, there are three different options for companion. You have 2.3.9 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm running Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that one and download OpenTX Companion. Okay, once you double click on the installer, you'll get a box that says OpenTX Companion Setup. Agree to the terms and conditions. Click Next, 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 and decide whether you want for current user only or all users. In my case, I'll just say it's for me only, and we'll let the install complete. Okay, now that the setup is complete, let's run it. Okay, you'll notice when we fire up OpenTX Companion, they tell you right up front as a first step, please configure the initial radio profile. That's super important to do that, and I'll also show you some build options. 
Now that we've downloaded and installed OpenTX Companion, step number two is to create a radio profile. We'll go under Settings, under Radio Profiles, and we're going to click Add Radio Profile. And you can name this anything you want. I'm going to call this John's TX16S. And under the radio type, you want to go down to Radio Master TX16S. If you're using a different radio, like a Jumper T16 or a Horus or a Tyrannus, that's where you'd make these choices. But I'm using a TX16S, so that's the one I want. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these options, but I am going to give you a little bit of a pro tip. If you don't fly helicopters, put a check mark and no heli. It gets rid of that entire tab that shows the helicopter options. I definitely want Lua support, so I'm going to check that. And the rest of it, I'm going to leave alone. I'm not going to cover this material in today's video because honestly it would add 20 minutes, so I'm just not going to do it. The other thing that I'm not going to cover is the SD structure and path because we're really just focused on the firmware for today. So we'll cover that some other time, but it's a good idea to set up the SD structure and backup folder on OpenTX Companion when you get the chance. Alright, one other thing that I want to make sure we do is set make sure you have the mode set correctly in my case I am a mode 2 flyer and under channel order I am AETR on my radio if you have something different make sure to select it where is AETR there it is AETR so if you have a different default channel order that you prefer make sure you select it here and then I always like to append a version number to the firmware when I download it Okay, so this radio profile is the main place that you want to tell OpenTX about your hardware. So just to recap, I've selected radio type as Radio Master TX16S. I put in no heli and Lua scripts. And I made sure that my stick mode was correct in mode 2 and my default channel order that I prefer is AETR. So now we can click OK. Now the next step before we go any further is let's connect the radio and back up our models. Since we're going to need to use bootloader mode anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up in bootloader mode. And the way you do that is you move the T1 and T4 trim sticks in, and then you press and hold the power button. Now, if you've done it correctly, you'll see right at the top, you're in the OpenTX bootloader, and there are two options in here, write firmware and exit. Don't click on write firmware. That's a different thing for a different day. We'll cover that some other time, but for now, just leave it on this screen, and then we'll connect the radio to the computer. So take a USB cable, so we take a USB cable and plug it in at the top of the radio right here, and then we take the other end of the cable and plug it into the computer. Now, if that works correctly, what you'll see on the right-hand side is a USB drive with all the contents that come on the SD card of the radio. That's a good sign. That means we see what we're supposed to see. The other thing you'll see is another drive letter that says firmware. Do not fool around in there. Just leave it alone. Don't, don't go in there. Just leave it alone. So we can just close that one. We don't need it. And for the D drive where I've got my SD card contents, I'm just going to minimize that for now. Now we want to read our models off the radio. This is a critically important step. And we do that by clicking on this option right here on the left that says read models and settings from radio. So I'm going to click that. And you can see I've got all my airplanes and my folders right here. The next thing I want to do is save that. So I'm going to save the model and radio settings to a file so I have them and you can put them wherever you want we'll put them under I'll put them in my uh, network attached storage drive and we'll call it RCVR demo backup okay so we'll save that now we've got our models and our settings for the radio backed up. Super important step. Okay, step number four, let's go ahead and download the firmware. 
up on the screen there's an option right here this little arrow that points down it says download let's click that and you'll see that it's offering firmware OpenTX TX16S you want to check that and make sure that's correct I have Lua checked because I want my Lua scripts to work I don't care about helicopter configurations and for me it's English so we'll check for updates and OpenTX says OpenTX does not seem to have ever been downloaded do you want to download it now hit yes and save that somewhere where you can find it on your computer I'm gonna put it in the same folder that I made my backup All right, you'll notice on the screen there's one more option here to download SD card contents. When we click on that, the browser is going to come up and it'll give us a list of SD card versions available for 2.3. Well, I always grab the latest one, so in this case it is version 2.3, version 00029. So just click that and download it, and we'll let that save, and we'll go back to flashing our firmware. Okay, so we've downloaded the firmware and we've already booted into bootloader mode that was step number five was to boot in bootloader mode but I did that from the start so we're already there now let's move on to step number six which is write firmware to radio and over here there's an option on the left hand side the red one that says write firmware to radio so click that and you can see that OpenTX already knows where I stored that file it's under OpenTX no, no heli EN 2.3.9 and the date and time of the firmware when it was compiled. Now here's an important thing too. You see this check mark that says check hardware compatibility? Always leave that checked because if you got the wrong file and you flash it, you could disable hardware. But if you leave this checked, the theory is that it'll verify that the firmware you're about to install on the radio is the correct one. So once we've got everything that we need there, let's hit write to TX. There we go. Flashing done. So now when you see that, you're 100% complete. You can go ahead and hit close. And now the last thing to do is, I said this was step seven in the opening, but we've already downloaded the SD card. Let's go ahead and extract the SD card, and I'll show you how to copy that over to your radio. Okay, now it's time to install the contents of our SD card download onto our SD card on the radio. So open up your download window. Okay, now that I've got my new SD card contents in the folder on the right. I can go ahead and highlight these and just drag them over to the left hand side and let them go. Now I'm not going to do that because I have custom sounds, I've got models, I've got images, I don't want that stuff to get messed up. But if you're starting from scratch, all you have to do is erase everything that's in here, copy the new material over, and then in OpenTX you can restore your models and settings by clicking on this box right here that says write models and settings to radio and when you do that you'll have a fresh install of the firmware a fresh install of your SD card contents like it came from the factory and a completely up-to-date radio in terms of the radio firmware itself so that's it that's all there is to upgrading the firmware on an open TX radio such as the radio master TX 16 s I hope you guys found that content useful, and if you did, your subscription would be greatly appreciated. Make sure you tell your friends, hit up my Amazon affiliate links for consumable RC gear, and check out my t-shirt shop. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. Okay, now that we've written our firmware to the radio, let's make sure it works. Let's unplug the USB connection from the top. And there's an option right here that says exit. If you click this and reboot, hit exit, it should reboot your radio. Okay, by definition, since the radio booted up after installing the firmware, that's a good sign. But we can check our firmware version by clicking on the system button and then hitting page left. And you can see under version, we've got version 2.3.9, the 614 date, and our options for no heli, multi-mode, Lua, 
and a couple of others that were defaulted to the radio that I didn't have to select. So notice in the model setup options that all the helicopter options are gone. I've been using that no heli option for years, so I don't even really remember where they put it in here, but I know it's in here somewhere. But on my radio, it's gone because I used that no heli option when I downloaded the firmware. Thing that you have to accomplish regarding telling OpenTX Companion what radio you have. I love Windows. Get out of my face. And then also notice up on the top here that, oops,